Good morning and welcome to BOTB HQ in Parsons Green, South West London. My name is Christian Williams, the presenter here at BOTB. And we're here this morning to judge the latest midweek car competition, which ran from the 2nd to the 8th of July 2020. And just before I hand over to Charlie, once again, huge congratulations to last week's midweek car competition winner, Philip Pangalos, winning that amazing BMW 530e. I'm now going to pass over to Charlie Hansen from Onside Law, who will oversee the proceedings this morning. My name is Charlie Hanson from Onside Law and I'll be overseeing the judging this morning. Firstly, I can confirm that the competition data has already been sent to the auditors Wilkins Kennedy. I would now like to introduce today's judges. First up, it's Alan Goma. Good morning, my name is Alan Goma. I'm an ex-professional footballer, having played for Paris Saint-Germain, Newcastle and Fulham. If you could now use the secure link provided and mark on the screen where you think the centre of the ball should be. And then we'll come back to you at the end for you to justify your position and for a final panel decision. Next up, we've got Peter Giorgio. Uh, good morning, my name's Peter Giorgio and I'm a futsal and football referee. Next up, Hugh Gilroy. Good morning, my name is Hugh Gilroy. I'm an active referee, mentor, tutor and observer. Next up, Leo Donnellan. Good morning, my name is Leo Donnellan. I'm an ex-professional football player, having been with Chelsea, Fulham and Leighton Orient. Next up, Andy Braithwaite. Thanks, Charlie. My name's Andy Braithwaite. I'm a football referee, mentor, and licensed observer. Next up, Kieran Fitzgibbon. Hi, my name is Kieran Fitzgibbon. I played football for more than 30 years and am now a senior county referee. Thanks, Alan. Uh, if you could now justify your position. Yeah, uh, thank you, Charlie. So, uh, yeah, and I've got two players in the shot. Um, I've assumed that the player on the left was a striker, uh, as he's got a you know number nine on uh, at the back of his shirt. And uh, it looks to me that it's, you know there's a there's a ball played you know uh, in the space behind. I guess you know the, uh, the player with the white shirt is a defender. I guess it's a, it's a ball played in his uh, in his back, you know, in the space. And uh, and he looks like he's trying to stretch to to head the ball. Um, I'm not sure uh, he's going to head the ball. Uh, he might be a bit short, but uh, you know, I, I, as you look at his body, as his body, uh, sorry, as you look at his body language, uh, he's got his arms up. Uh, you know, he's stretching his whole body, and uh, you know, he's trying to reach the ball. Uh, the play on the left. Uh, uh, is behind him and he's, he looks like he's anticipating, you know, the ball uh, in the space and uh, he's just looking, hoping that, you know, the player in white will miss the ball. Uh, I think he's looking, you know, up uh, diagonally uh, while the player uh, in white is looking, you know, a bit steeper. Uh, so, yeah, where these two uh, eye lines meet, this is where I put my cross. Thanks, Alain. Uh Peter, if you could now justify your position. Uh, yes, mine is the, the green uh, green cross. Uh, we have two players in, in the shot, um, one in white and one in uh, blue and purple. Uh, looks like to me that the player in white is favourite for the ball, he, he, even though that it's a funny stance that he's got, not too sure if he's fallen away or he's been slightly pushed beforehand. Um, by the player but, uh, behind him, but I do believe that the ball is in front of him, uh, but the ball coming in uh, into the screen uh, as, as we look at it um, and uh, with the player in the blue and purple, he's certainly looking out to us as we look at the screen, so um, I didn't take too much in the end from that player from his eyes. I've made mainly taken it from the, the player in, in, in white. Um, as Alan said, he's got his arms up, ready to 
head the ball in some fashion, even though it looks like a funny angle that he's coming in into the ball. Uh, so ready to stretch out and um, the distance from, from, from the actual, uh, his head is where I put the uh, centre of the ball, which is my green cross. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Hugh, if you could now justify your position. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, uh, mine is the blue cross, um, two players in shot, and I feel the ball's been played over, um, dropping in. Wasn't too sure whether the player in white um, has obviously moved his arms either to start to play the ball, but I also thought he might have had a nudge in his back and been put off balance just because of the way his body shape is, quite an unusual angle. Um, both of them, for me, looking at the ball, so where both of their eye lines met, and based on the fact that, that was dropping in a little distance from them, um, that's where I placed my blue cross. Thanks, Hugh. Leo, if you can now um, just for your position. Yes, th there's two players in shot. Um, like Elaine, I think the ball has been uh, sort of played into the channel, uh, hopefully over the player in white, for the player in blue to run onto. I think the player in blue is just trying to anticipate maybe the player in white missing the ball. I think he's probably just given him a little push, which, is, which has unbalanced him. I think the player in white is favoured to get the ball. Uh, I think his body shapes are unusual and I, I think your arms wouldn't be up like that unless maybe you've been pushed. Um, so I think he was going to head the ball. He's had a push and the player in red is trying to run into the channel. Looking at their eye lines, I think the player, you get a good view with the player in white. And I think he was looking up, as I said, to head the ball. His head's you know, looking a little bit of a diagonal line. Uh, so that's why <coughs> where I put my orange cross. Thanks, Leo. Uh, Andy, if you can now justify your position. Thanks, Charlie. I'm the grey cross. Uh, pretty much uh, the same as what most people have said. Um, the guy in white, yes, I believe he has been a nurturing figure by the guy behind him. It looks like he's almost making a sort of a bridge, bridge from as the ball's dropping in. He's, he's got no chance of playing the ball. So he's trying to affect the guy in white. Uh, that's why his uh, body position is a little bit all right as, as we look at it. Um, he was, it looks like he was initially going up to head the ball, so you immediately start to pull yourself up, you know, still with your hands to, to pull through. Uh, but as I said, the, the, the way he didn't shape that his body is, he has been nudged. Um, but I believe that the ball is is dropping in there. Um, I've taken a lot from his eye line uh, to give me the angle, um, that sort of diagonal angle that, that I have there. And also the guy behind him is looking very intently at the ball. As I said, he's got no chance of playing it, but he's got his eyes firmly fixed on the ball. So with the two, uh, with the intersection of, the, of their two gazes, that's not the place to centre of my ball, but I have. Thanks, Andy. Uh, Kieran, if you can now justify your position. Thanks, Charlie. Um, I more or less agree with most of my colleagues here. I think the ball is being played uh, towards the channel behind the defender, which I think is the player in white, given that the number nine. Player, the back of the player in red shirt. Um, he looks like he's anticipating the ball being played in that channel. I think he's just turned around looking to see where the ball is. I also agree that he's probably given a little nudge to the player in white because uh, it looks like a very unnatural position while with his arms be up in that position. Um, I think he's probably tried to start his jump or get prepared to jump and maybe a little nudge from the centre forward has um, put him a little bit off balance. The only eye that I've taken is the player in white tie. I think the player in red and blue is just looking behind him generally at the ball. But I think the player in white has still got his the one eye that we can see fixed on the ball. I think it's coming in a little bit to the side, which is why my cross is a little bit to the right of the players. But I think that's uh, because it's being played across from right to left as we look uh, behind him. Um, I'm not sure whether he's going to head the ball or whether actually the cross of being fouled is putting his hands up to get the ball. But um, I, I place my cross based on the eye line of a player in white. Thanks, judges. Alan, as the main judge, could you now come to a panel decision with the other five judges? And for your reference, the larger white cross is a calculated average of the six individual selections. All right. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, let's start drawing a few lines just to have a look at the spreads. So 
So if we got only the right eye, we can't see much of the left eye. And this one, I think is mainly the right eye. Okay, um, yeah, we've got a, a kind of similar spread, you know, from this, the, uh, both players. The, fr from the player in white, uh, I think, you know, we've got, you know, four, uh, four crosses, you know, looking nearly at the same, in the same direction. Then we've got mine, which is slightly on the right. And then we've got Kieran, uh, which is um, even more on the right. Um, Kieran, uh, you know, from your judgment, uh, so I guess you thought the ball was a bit more on the right hand side. Is it based on the, the play in, uh, in white? Mainly, I, yeah, I, I think it's it's to do with I think the ball's coming in from as we look at the screen from the right in a diagonal position across him. So yeah, I agree with that. I, I think it's coming across sort of to play behind him. It's not coming in a direct line from where we are, which is why I've placed it there. I just perhaps thought it's a little bit he wasn't quite there yet because although he's, he's focused on the ball, his hands position or head doesn't look like he's about to make direct contact with the ball. Um, but that's yes. the reason why I'm a little bit to the right. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, I agree on the point that, you know, the ball is not, you know, it still has a bit of distance, I think, you know, to, to travel. Um, but to me personally, it might be a bit, you know, a bit too much on the, on the right. Um, Leo, you're, you're the furthest on the left, you know, what's, what's your thoughts? Hi, Alain. Yeah, yeah Hi. I, I just, I took, like from the other judges that I've heard, I, I took it mainly from the player in white. Mm -hmm. I think his eye line, you, you get a good view with that eye. I think he's, he, he was favoured to, uh, to win the ball. So I concentrated mainly on him. And I think the player in blue, I think he's just running into the channel, hoping he was going to miss the ball. Yeah, I do agree on that point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we've got, so as I said, we've got four crosses nearly on the same line. Uh, Hugh being the highest. So can, can you can you let us know about your thoughts, uh, Hugh? Yeah, sure. For me, Alan, I think, as has been said, he's probably got a little nudge to put him off balance. And I agree, I think the ball's been played over, which links the two together because you know, if he puts him slightly off balance, he misses the header, he's then in. So I think that's why he looks slightly in an odd position. For me, I still think felt it had a bit of distance, partly from how much of the white of the eye of the blue player we could see. But also I think from looking at the player in white's eye, the one we can really see, I think you can see he's looking up. And I just felt if he was going to jump, whether he's been pushing them back or not, it'd be a little bit of a distance away from him, not in front of him. Otherwise, he would be playing in a slightly different way, I felt. Yeah, you know, okay. Uh, yeah. I do agree with that. Um, just, you know, if, if I put the cross on the average as it is, so we've got, you know, most of the cross is actually uh, around, the, uh, you know, hidden by the ball. And we've got Kieran on the, on the right-hand side. Um, sh shall we remove Kieran just, you know, to have a look, you know, uh, how the average is moving? Um, so... Yeah, for me, for me, this is you know looking at the the right eye of his player. I think you know. Could you just look at his eye again, Alan? Just while you're talking. One. Yeah. Yeah, I just felt just go down a touch. Yeah, I just felt it was looking up for me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I do agree. Um, so uh, by removing removing Kieran, you know, we move slightly on the left which is in this position. So if I put a circle, uh, you know, here, so it's covering, you know, ma yeah, mainly all the crosses, you know, apart from the, the, the Kieran's one, uh, of course. Um, can, can you with Kieran, yeah, sorry. You know, we are slightly on the right. Yeah, yeah, go on. I, I'm, I'm, I think that so with, with Kieran's in, it's it, where the um, average is, is a better position. With Kieran, okay. Sorry, Alan. I, yeah. I also I also feel the same thing there because although we can't see his left eye uh, when we're generally judging, um, 
we normally take a sort of a, a middle ground between the right and left eye. So although we can't see his left eye, I yeah. feel that you know it's somewhere where the average is with Kieran in. I, I, the same as people, I feel is is better. I fully understand what everybody else is saying there, um, but that's if we're solely taking it from the right eye. Um, so the, the average with Kieran to me feels almost in the centre of, of his gaze, if you like. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. I see it. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with Kieran with the fact that, you know, there's, you know, still a bit of, you know, uh, distance to travel, you know, for the ball. Because I don't think he's, you know, he's fully stretched, uh, this player. Now looking at his right eye, I think he's, you know, he's a bit steeper. But if, if everyone is happy with the average, you know, I'm happy also to, be, to go with the average as it is. It's, I, think, I think it's a great point about both eyes because... I obviously went from where his right eye is, and I think that's where he's looking. But we know in reality he's, he's looking at both his eyes, and it's probably, if we could see both somewhere, more in the middle than just where one eye is looking. Okay, yes, yeah. Point, I don't think... I agree, I think the average sat there in the middle is probably better. I don't think it's yeah. quite as low as that, but we don't know because we can't see that. We can't see that eye to get the direction. So although I don't think it is where Kieran put it, I think mm. the guy in white's left eye could easily be looking over and more in that direction, which would make the average, as Peter and Andy have said, a better spot. With mm, I see that. Okay. Okay, so um, is everyone happy with the, the average as it is, you know, including, you know, everyone? Yeah. yeah I'm, yeah. I'm happy with the average there. I think yeah. the average is better a little, in my opinion, but the average is better a little bit lower because I think the defender would not go to head the ball if he thought it was too high and he was going to miss it. I think a good defender would be anticipating running back with the ball. So that's why I don't think it's too high, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, my yeah. The average there. Yeah, I got your point. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's go with the average there. Um, okay. Let's remove the pen. Okay. Charlie, we're done. Are all the judges happy with that decision? Yes. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Right, thanks. Uh, Alan, if you could now hit submit. The coordinates selected are 1987725. These coordinates will now be passed to Wilkins Kennedy to calculate the winner of the competition and they will inform BOTB. That concludes the judging process. Thank you.